Okay, welcome into video four on this deck series. We're gonna jump into this one here pretty quick. A couple things for you first is apologies for the audio issues in this video. I don't know what was going on with the mic system, but maybe a cable was a little loose. We got some static in there and had to cut out some parts. So uh, bear with me on that. And secondly, as always, I want to share with you Thermary who's sponsoring this entire series. We're gonna be doing a lot of the install of the main deck boards in this video, as well as this beautiful soffit material, the ceiling material, tongue and groove up above me. Also, you might notice there's lights set up now. So those are going in as well. Those are provided by Decor, which I'm gonna talk more about in this video as well. So let's just jump right in and uh, get started on this video. Okay, so here we're just kind of staging the material, getting it all unloaded. It's all on the trailer right now. And uh, we're gonna start working on that main decking section uh, and really get a good feel for how this decking material goes down. First thing we gotta do is put down some deck tape. Um, I mentioned in the last video how I'm not really honestly sure how useful this stuff is, but it does add some level of a moisture barrier. Uh, more importantly, and this is what the folks at Thermary mentioned, is that it uh, just darkens those those uh, joists. So when you look through the gaps of the decking, you don't see the actual lumber. You just kind of see black tape. It looks a little nicer. We're starting for the with the first row here. This was by far the most difficult part of this. Obviously, you want to make sure this first row is straight and uh, like coplanar to the house. We're coming right off that main walkway, which we put the the decking material on in the last video. So I'm going back to the corner here. We've notched it for the post. Had to put that piece in first, create that notch, and then just slide this piece in. Um, now there are some crazy notches going around the door and stuff that we had to do, uh, and that that took some time to make that look clean. Um, and that transition from the actual deck up to that concrete threshold looks real nice. Okay, so we're gonna go into installing this, a little bit more detail on this. So um, we obviously you wanna be on 16 inch centers with your joists. Now these are short boards. I'm gonna talk more about that in a little bit. Um, they can carry the load between 16 inches, no problem when you in match those, they have a really good joint. Um, and what we're using to install these are T6 clips um, and they are for wider decking boards. Um, I think five inches or wider. So the gap is gonna be slightly bigger on these clips. Um, that's gonna allow for that um, expansion and contraction that you need. Uh, so these clips, the one thing you wanna do, a couple things. So you don't wanna hammer them directly with a hammer because you'll actually bend the clip and then you'll, you'll affect the gap, you'll affect how everything works. So what I found helped really well is to seat those clips. Nine times out of 10, you can just place them in by hand and seat them. But if they don't quite slide into that groove, if your joist is low or it just binds, you can take a little rock chisel there and hit on the bottom of the clip down on the base plate and just lock it up into that groove and seat it really well. Um, do not hit it on the tabs that clip into the wood because like I said, you'll bend those. And once you have it seated really well, then you just put a screw right in it. They provide, Thermary provides all the screws and um, you wanna make sure that you set the clutch on your drill because you can over crank those screws um, and send them right through the clip or even uh, bend the clip up. So we got into the system and it flows pretty quick once you get it all figured out. The clips work you know, fairly easy. It's, uh, it's a really good system by Thermally. Now we worked all the way to the concrete planter here and then I wanted to move down these steps because I knew this was gonna take a while. Uh, and I, I did these in a probably a bit of a different way than a lot of people would. I just kind of came up with my own system. But first thing we did is we got out the track saw, cut everything flush to the actual deck, um, which is a great thing about track saws is you, they're just so useful, especially in the situation across the board. You can get a nice straight cut here. And then uh, I had to finish off the start of that cut because it went back behind my wall a little bit. So I just grabbed a hand saw. I was in a little bit of an awkward position trying to cut this, so it was a little difficult to get the saw started. Once it started going, uh, got through that, cut that last piece of waste off, and we're gonna tuck a board up um, behind here to cover all this. Okay. 
Okay, so I went ahead and went down and started the tread. Um, these will get nailed in, and I'm trying to hide, not nailed, screwed, trying to hide those screws in behind so the riser covers those. So we're gonna get the first row of board set. We're obviously gonna do this in two rows, and uh, end up having to do a little bit of shimming here. I had a bit of a, kind of a bow down the middle of this framing a little bit, and that would affect the riser boards. I wanna make sure my measurement is the same, or at least, a, if it has a slight bit of a taper, we can manage that, but a little bit of a bow is going to is going to turn out to look kind of strange. So I just made some shims, slid them up under where the clips are, and uh, shimmed them a little bit, and then slid that board. One thing to notice here is the backboards are wider than the front. That's because we're going to put our risers on top of those backboards, and once we do that, we'll lose three quarter, and the widths will actually actually match at that point. So I went ahead and went down to the bottom deck surface here, this little mini deck and started adding some rows in there to get that started. And now I'm gonna come back and start working on riser boards. And we did have a little bit of an issue with this bottom deck as well. There was kind of a bow and two of those, those two of those joists were a little low. And you can kind of see from this shot, it's not easy, but we, we put like a shim board in to kind of try to level it out. That's one thing about framing is if your frame's a little bit off, it kind of, it can mess up all this uh, stair transitions and all the skirting and make things kind of look off. So. I'm trying really hard, probably being over perfectionist in this in my furniture mind to get things level and look clean and just get it right. Okay, so as my dad kind of continues getting that bottom deck done, I'm gonna start working on risers. Um, you see I'm putting that first row in. I went ahead and set that row. And now I'm gonna come put a top board and this is a full length board here to make things easier. Um, I'll just set that and scribe it. Uh, in this particular case, it, it was a straight cut, but it was a taper. So I think it was like an eighth inch change from one end to the next, which, you know, that's, that's okay. Um, that's not a big deal. But like I said earlier, if it had a bow in it or something, I think your eye could catch that. So if I have to cut a taper, it's fairly easy to do on the bandsaw. You're not going to get a perfectly straight cut, but I'm going to leave a little bit of material on here when I cut it. And then uh, we'll send it through the joiner to clean up that cut, straighten it. And then even after that, even off the joiner, you have some mill marks uh, that aren't very attractive, especially if you feed it really fast. It kind of leaves these little ridges on the, on the edge of the board. So I just took it over to the bench since I can and busted out my smoothing plane and a couple quick passes. And it's just a perfect mirror finish that matches the face. It looks nice and clean. I also put a round over on the front edge, which I don't think I showed in the video. Um, but I think we put like a one eighth round over just to, to ease that edge. If you leave that edge crisp, it's just, you know, it's a stair tread, it's a riser. So not a tread, but a riser, you're going to step right on that edge and break it. So you want to round it over nice, clean footed. I think it looks cool. This, this way that terminated those boards into that. Um, I don't, I, I know a lot of decks get built this way, but I, I didn't really look at anything. I just thought this is how I want to do it and did it. And I think it, I think it came out looking pretty dang good. Mayor. Now I've had a constant battle keeping my dog off the deck. Mayor drives me crazy. He just gets up there and he'll see a deer or something. Just go into a full sprint off of my deck and just scratch it all up. All right, so once the risers are all cut, uh, we're going to screw these in just the same. Using the, the same system Thermary provided. This really cool little countersink bit. I want to make sure those holes are all nice and cleanly paired and spaced out. Just looks nice. We will plug them, so you're, they're going to pretty much be hidden. But even when they're plugged, you can kind of see them. So, okay, so we moved down to the next stair tread. Uh, we're doing the same process. This is actually the material we're using is actually the soffit material. So it just worked out the widths to, to make two boards. They're ripped down a little bit, um, and that's good because we needed to take the tongue and the groove off. Uh, but this is the same material there. we're going to use here shortly in this video on the uh, soffit. And this was a straight cut. There was no taper to it. So I can just set a fence on my table saw and rip it out and clean up the, the saw cut and put it in place. Okay, so we get it cut. Drop it on there just like the top one. Once we get all these screws in, I'm going to go ahead and you'll see how we fill these. So cool thing about this too, is you don't have to make the plugs. They provide all the matching plugs uh, and they, you don't have to shave them down either, which is super helpful. If you ever use plugs, a lot of times you, they, you leave them proud and you'll chisel them down or sand them down. 
these are dialed in to where you can just hammer them flush and they they kind of wedge in there and fit real tight so they're actually really well made i was impressed with it and the process is pretty easy just throw a little glue in them i'm using some tight bond three because more waterproof and uh hammer them down with a little mallet there and you're good to go So with the risers and treads done for the stairs, we move back to the main deck. I want to talk a little bit about Thermary's uh, exclusive JEM technology. So it's a joinery end match. They have this really cool joint that they cut on these boards that allow them to come together and, and be pretty dang strong. So they can span uh, between joists, between 16 inch centers. They could probably span more than 16 inches, but obviously your standard spacing is going to be 16 inches. They seat up and line up. I didn't have an issue. That's one thing I can say about Thermary is the mill, the milling on this wood was accurate across all the pieces. So I didn't put any pieces together that were off in any way. They weren't at a level. And so there's obviously a really well, good thought into their quality control, into their process and how they mill these boards. It looks great. And I think you can see in this video that it's it, it really is a nice look and you don't need full length runs. You don't need to do anything fancy and put a splitter board in the middle to divide out different links. You just go and you put it together. It makes the whole process faster and it works out really well. They do recommend that you oil the ends before you install it. I was a little bit lazy and didn't do that, but I don't think that's a bad idea at all because moisture will get in there. And anytime you get moisture into ingrain, the ingrain sucks it up quicker. There's this change in uh, the movement of the wood. It's different in the ingrain than it is uh, in the core of the board. And it probably likely was going to crack. So sealing the ingrain is a good idea. Don't be lazy like me. Okay, so we're moving on to lighting. I don't want to build this awesome deck and not have some really nice lighting in it. We're going to put lights in the soffit and down in the main deck. And I'm going to use a company called Decor Lighting for this uh, part of the project. Now they um, are a kind of a made to order DIY setup. So it's a plug and play. Uh, you send them a layout of your deck and they will custom design a lighting scheme for you and then basically give you a kit that you can install yourself. The system's very simple. It just plugs into a 110 outlet. You can run um, all of the lines yourself, install the wires yourself and just plug and play everything. There's no splicing, nothing like that. Um, basically what we're doing here is we're just laying out on the deck floor where I want all my lights in the ceiling. I'm going to mark it with blue tape and then I'll transfer that vertically with a laser and mark it in the ceiling. So as I start putting up our soffit material we'll know when we're getting close to where we need a light and this helps me get everything laid out and spaced properly how I want it. Yeah, you can see it. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, so we're gonna fast forward real quick, be doing this in all the videos to kind of show you uh, finished what it all is. So looking up, you can kind of see um, the light there. We got a bunch of these little soffit lights and then going all the way down this whole soffit, we've got the same thing. So what you'll do is you'll figure out your lighting system you want and then you'll order the appropriate lights, the wire that you need, and the splitters you'll need. So they've got these big kind of six-way splitters that are super helpful. And then the little T-splitters, which are gonna split you off to each individual light. So everything runs off your regular, uh, just household outlet. We ran one up here into the ceiling. This will control all of our ceiling lights. And then we also ran an outlet right below me under the deck, which, can, which powers all the lights in the deck floor and the side, the skirting. So with this system, you've got the transformer here that's gonna kick you over to 12 volt. And then this is a dimmer switch here that has a remote. So you can add this on, it's a really cool feature. So that I can click these on from my house using a, a kind of a remote. And then with that remote, there's all kinds of different modes and, and dimness and brightness you can set to. So I put everything up here. You can see this wire right here is the wire that feeds out to all the lights up here in the ceiling. So we basically fed that wire down to the end of the soffit. And then right about here, we installed this six-way splitter. So that runs a, a few runs out towards these lights. 
and then sends a couple runs out up to these lights. Now, as we make our run from that six-way splitter, every, every point we hit where we want a light, we basically put in one of these T's. So um, this is just, like I said, it's plug and play. You put a little grease in there, which they provide the grease for you. Um, and then you would run your, continue to run your power out this way. And then when you're ready to install your light, every light comes with a, I don't know what the exact length of cord is, but um, it comes with its own bit of cord. So you've got the light here and you've got the extra cord. So you'll use this cord, plug it right into your T. That gives you plenty of slack to work um, to get your light positioned. And then you can mount your light in the ceiling and then come in and plug your light in and then you got power. One thing I would recommend that I uh, learned the hard way is the when you plug your light directly in here, it might be a good idea to wrap that in duct tape. Uh, when you have to pull these lights up out of the ceiling and pull down on them, if this light cable is gets caught up in your ceiling and you pull it loose like that, now you got a cable stuck up in your ceiling that you got to try to dig out. Uh, basically, to this point in the video, what we've done is we've run all the wire down. We basically made a big loop down, put T's at every light, just like I showed you, and then came back and kind of ended here. And then on this off this splitter, we came in and we made a huge run around here and put T's off at every light just the same. So it's a real simple uh, plug and play system that is nice because you don't need you just basically need an outlet and you can hook these up and if you want it switched you just put your outlet on a switch and you're good to go but the remotes are super handy um, I've had no issue with those so from here we've kind of got our lights laid out what we're gonna do is put in all of our soffit and as we go we'll plug in these lights and you'll see kind of how that works okay so the first part with this soffit is the first row it's always the most difficult Dad? Yeah. run a string line here it's kind of hard to see in this shot but I've basically it's a 50 foot run I've run a line the whole way basically getting me in line with that fascia board at the end of the soffit and it worked out great because I could put the first I could put that second row in and it hit right on the rock and then the the back set from that window to the face of the rock was about the width of my material so I was able to start with that second row and then come back and fill in uh, in the windows fairly quickly and easily without doing a lot of cutting. Uh, you can see the string here. It, this is, I, I really felt like the ceiling would go fairly quick because it's just tongue and groove. But things get a lot more complicated when you're working above your head and you're reaching up and you're on ladders. And uh, this process <clears throat> proved to be a little bit tedious and slow. Here, I wouldn't hit this material with a metal hammer. Thermally modified wood is very brittle. And I learned this the hard way. I actually wasted a few boards doing that. Finally, I got a little block that matched the end cut and I could put it in there and tap it and seat it. Because what you're doing is you're, you've got that same thing on the deck floor. These two ends are meeting with a really nice joint, but you got to kind of tap it to seat it together. And if you don't tap it, a lot of times you'll have a slight gap there where those two boards come, come together. This was a bit of an odd space at the very end of this first run. I had to fill in um, kind of with these little pieces. It was a little bit weird. You can see how my hands have, and arms have turned black from cutting this material. It's just that dust from the thermally modified wood has uh, just coated my arms. Okay, so after all this wiring, started putting up the paneling. We're finally to a point where we can put our first light in, which is pretty exciting. So we marked out on the deck on our spot and I got my little dot laser on there. Unfortunately, with my luck, that hits right on a seam, I mean, dead middle. So we're gonna move this one over to center it on this board and just do it that way. Nothing to worry about. Uh, pencil. Now each light you get comes with the light, little cover, and the trim. And then you got this long cord, which is handy because this is what we're gonna hook in right now and hang it through our hole. And then we can set this in and push our light up in there. Pop this dude in. <clears throat> Okay. 
cool. Put this through. Okay, so once we get the trim piece set, we can plug the light right in um, and then push it up into the trim. And it's got this nice little cover that makes it look nice and clean. And it's just a really simple little light that has a great look and it has quite a bit of power to it at night. So you can adjust the brightness and at full brightness, it really does light up pretty well. So this will give you a closer view of how we're screwing in these boards. I talked to you earlier about how we go through the tongue. You can see you kind of just go at a 45 degree angle one thing you got to be real careful with is you can't go, you can't drive the screw in too hard. This is thermally modified wood, it's brittle, and you'll split the tongue almost every time. So you got to kind of take it easy, set the clutch, and go slowly. And you can bury the head of it. This is really small kind of trim screws. You can just bury the head of those right into the tongue. So you're starting to see here just how nice this material looks. It, it's really bringing a lot more to this house, having the, in the soffit as well as in the deck. Before we just had plywood up there that was painted. So this is just a much more custom um, feel with real, just beautiful wood up there. It is a long process and it did create a lot more work, but I think it's worth the effort to get this look out of it. Okay, so we just continue down the same process of installing lights. We're on a new row now. Um, get this one all set and you'll get a chance to see. It's a good idea to test it, obviously, as you go. Anyone probably would know that. So we're gonna see this turn on here and just get an idea of what that's gonna look like. This was a lot of work, um, way more than I thought it would be. It's much harder working upside down than it is working down. You got gravity working against you, a lot of boards falling. Just, you know, once I got a system down, it went pretty good, but it wasn't super easy. The, the only downside to this is the way it laid out, I had like this sliver of inch and a half wood right here that I had to fill in. And I didn't film the end of this because I was working on the weekend. I was grinding. I was trying to get through it. Uh, it was hot and it's going to be really hot today. And I just, I wanted to get through it. I didn't want, I didn't want to mess with the camera. You guys, you can watch me put up soffit um, only for so long. So that's where we ended up. Just this little sliver. I had to face nail these in. I'll fill those holes and then these got screwed. So I'll have to plug those. Got some plugging to do over here and we'll come in and caulk this to make it look nice and clean. Uh, but other than that, you know, that's, I think it came out pretty good. I'm pretty happy with myself. I think it looks good. We're shifting gears today. We're gonna do the main ceiling. So this is gonna take a little bit more work, especially as we get higher. Uh, we're gonna start right in here. Right now we're working on kind of furring out these spots here. So we've got an attachment point. Uh, and then once we do that, we pull some nails and we start hanging hanging boards. We're kind of staging things right now. I've got the saw set up. I've got material in the truck. i got to drag that over and we're going to start working here soon. <clears throat> okay, so once we get the front done, we've got this big... Oh gosh. You I right? just fell down. Okay. I totally forgot I did that. Yeah, Let's see that one more time. Yeah. You alright? I'm okay. Yeah, I'm okay. I think I'll pull my groin, maybe. <laughs> I'm, I'm all right. You sure? Yeah. I'm glad you hit on that soft ground rather than the concrete like Mom did. Did you get that on film? I think so. <laughs> my groin hurts. I, I did like the splits. <laughs> okay, let's be aware of where the deck is. <laughs> I was paying really close attention to that when I was uh, doing it. I broke my bit. Let me... uh, you got another one? I think I got one more. Uh, luckily, I was okay. Uh, didn't get injured, um, thankfully. There was, there was a few of these little spills I got uh, working on this deck. I just took a step, and there wasn't any deck there. I stepped right off the edge, so I should have known better. Um, but we're back on the main ceiling now. We've got... Um, a lot to do here and this this is the same process so I don't want to bore you with uh, hours of putting up soffit material everything's the same we're gonna lay the soffit uh, with the screw through the tongue we're gonna put lights in as we go and it's honestly gonna start to transform this deck especially once we get it lit up at night it just looks amazing
Okay, so we made some good progress yesterday. The ceiling's coming along great, and every time I look up, I'm just so pumped with how nice it looks. This wood looks amazing. Um, it's really, once you get the first row started, it's really not super hard. It's just a matter of, of you know, laying up boards and screwing them in. I had some help from Travis yesterday and my dad. I'm gonna put a few more hours into it today, try to get maybe up here a little bit to that light. And it's gonna get slower, obviously, as we go because we're going up and we gotta get on ladders. Real quick, I wanted to share this. We're on the last run, well, not the last, second to last run of lights for the soffit. We got those up yesterday. Same old deal I've shared with this before, but I'm gonna hang these up. They're already up in the ceiling. My dad pre-ran everything. So basically what we do is drill a hole, put the housing in the hole, pull the light through, plug it in, and it's good to go. We've got a laser level. Just see where we're hitting. Most of the time, these are hitting on um, joints. <laughs> it's just the way it works out. This particular one. So we're we got to make the decision if we want to. I think we'll just come over this way. Well, she, man, I don't know. I think I'm gonna actually come this way. So we're gonna move the beam over. Okay, and then I'm gonna check this down here. Make sure I'm still in fairly good line with that. Looks good. Let's mark that on the ceiling. Gonna come and right about here. That's probably more where we want to be. So we'll drill a hole there, pull our light through. And we'll do the next one. Push it now. That one? Oh, look, they work. Good job, bud. We got lights. Do it again. Boom. Beautiful. Okay. We gotta like the milk control. Okay, don't lose that milk control, bud. You guys, you're famous at losing things. You know, why don't you let me hold it? There we go. Okay, thanks. You, you're being a great helper, bud. Thank you. I like that circle. Yep. Okay, that's gonna be it for this video. Appreciate you guys tuning in. Remember, you can support the channel by getting merchandise from me or even join Patreon, that's always helpful. Uh, we got a lot accomplished in this video. We got all of the thermary decking down, minus this little area here. We got the soffit done for the most part. And next, what we'll be doing is putting the framing out for the skirting around the side of the deck. And then we'll put that last bit of thermary material on for that skirting. Really cool uh, feature in that is it has a nice like quarter inch gap reveal all the way around that whole skirting. So it looks pretty, pretty clean looking. So as always, appreciate you guys tuning in. Leave a comment, let me know what you think, and we'll see you next time.